we had our quick layover once again. No time for pretzels in the airport. Sad. But whatever, what can you do? Our bags actually made it here and they were for the first time ever. The first one's off. And yeah, this day's already looking pretty great. Going to our hotel, gonna get a little freshen up. Eat something, I'm sure you'll see what it is. And Take yeah. Take a guess, it's something we never eat. I hope it's from the I'm just. The hotel is beautiful. The theme of the lobby changes with every season, and this season the theme was a ski chalet. It was warm and cozy and definitely accomplished that vibe. Hello. Buongiorno. We are in Milan. Oh. Milan, sorry, Milan. Milano. M Milano. <laughs> Before we get to the good stuff, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. So we're just on our way to lunch and we're having, you can guess, because who doesn't go to Italy to eat Chinese food? This isn't just a dumpling restaurant. It is Italian and Asian fusion, and we had never heard of that before. The interior was incredible. There were floor to ceiling windows, a huge dining space that was totally open, and these incredible onyx gongs. Hence the name, gong. <laughs> <laughs> the dumplings were delicate and delicious. They used traditional dumpling making technique and combined that with classic Italian flavors and the freshest ingredients. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I love you for a thousand more. So we just finished our 4 p.m. snack. It's quite nice, quite nice. It was originally just going to be a drink, but turned into a little bit more than a little bit more. We had some fried olives that were stuffed and some fried sage leaves, which were a surprise hit. Can you even go to Italy without having multiple snack breaks every day? I venture to say no. Anyway, we're gonna go check out some of the shops around the hotel and then get changed for dinner and I'll we'll see you right back again. Dinner tonight is at De Giacomo, which is definitely a staple when visiting Milan. The New York Times even called this restaurant one of the most exclusive restaurants, not only in Milan, but possibly the world. The restaurant was designed by famed architect Renzo Mangiardino and Studio Perali and specializes in Italian food done in the most simple and delicious way. From the second you walk in, you are greeted by a spread of fresh seafood. Anything you can imagine, it's there. And then as you continue into the restaurant, you see a fully stacked trolley of different amazing desserts. Every single one is freaking incredible. And maybe a million different wines to choose from. You really can't go wrong with anything you order from starter to dessert. It's so nice out today. We're wearing these warm jackets, but like totally worse later, just to make attractions. <laughs> the whole area here is pedestrians only, plus electric cars. So you really can get a great look at the entire city and not have to worry about being run over by a car. So we're about to cross the street and guess what? This time we don't have to say, oh, almost got hit by a car. <gasps> and if you don't know what we're referring to? Hopefully you watched Paris by now. Our plan is basically to walk around the area, check out some of the shops. Malaya is incredible home there. Yeah, just to go on about that. This is the home of Fornicetti. So we feel at home too. We are so excited to visit the Fornicetti flagship store. From the second you walk into the store, everything is incredibly decorated. The furniture, the ceramics, the walls. Wherever you look, there is fabulous design. And don't even get us started on the candles and incense. That scent, their signature scent, literally could live the rest of our lives only smelling that. Mmm, this smells delish. Now we are walking to 10 Corso Como, which is a really cool, one of the first concept stores. 10 Corso Como is one of the coolest stores ever. The building itself is gorgeous, with a courtyard that separates the cafe from the store. You basically walk into the store and it's an open concept with a bunch of small installations throughout. And you can see their signature polka dot pattern 
throughout the whole space. They sell everything there, from designer goods to homeware to umbrellas, pin patches, collaborations with big brands, collaborations with small brands, literally everything you can imagine and more. Oh yeah, there's wrapping paper too with their brand logo. Yeah, she just threw that out there, wrapping paper with their logo. Dinner tonight is at Carlo e Camilla. It is a restaurant that has been repurposed from a 1930s sawmill. We went to the chef's more formal restaurant, Krakow, on a previous trip to Milan and loved it. So this time we were going to give the more casual and cool restaurant a try. Okay, so this restaurant is already so cool. Come, we'll take you in with us. You walk into a room with massive chandeliers and long communal tables where you actually don't feel that close to the people beside you. The food was a modern take on Italian with a twist, so you had the comfort of traditional Italian food with a new outlook. The food was delicious and the staff were so knowledgeable and kind. So we just finished dinner and it was fabulous. Oh, such a cool restaurant and the food was so the exhibit is like a 40 minute drive from our hotel and it closes at 4 and we got here at 10 to 4 but somehow we begged the man and he is letting us come in so this will be a quick visit but it better be worth it for a nearly two hour drive. <laughs> We have heard so much about the Dan Flavin installation at the Chiesa Rosa Church, so we decided to drive the 40 minutes it takes to get to see this installation. We were expecting big things, and honestly, I don't mean to be a hater, but I have no idea how the other people on the internet got these magnificent photos because, well, we'll let you take a look at what we saw. <laughs> so we're here, we've got the installation. But wait, there's more. Pink light. And there's the yellow light right there. Now you've seen the exhibit and the installation too. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. We're about to walk into the Galleria, which is maybe the most stunning shopping area ever. It's like a part indoor outdoor mall. Mall, but like Take mall doesn't even do it. The Galleria is an iconic building in Milan and is the oldest active shopping mall. It is housed in a four story double arcade in the center of town. We visited the Pasticceria, Pasticceria Marchese, which is located at the top of the Galleria. We were asking our waiter, what should we have? And he suggested an espresso, but a very specific type of espresso a ginseng espresso. And if you haven't tried one, go get yourself one because they're amazing. It was explained to us to be an Italian version of a Red Bull and let me tell you, it tasted amazing. It was, amazing. It was like a sweet, uh, but not overly sweet gingerbread flavor. I'm making that up, but it tasted really good. The snacks were amazing and we highly recommend tasting anything with chestnut because that is their specialty. Dinner is at a place called Langosteria and it's supposed to be a nice secret spot, very cool. So we'll have to show you how it looks when we get in. See you there. Dinner tonight is at Langosteria. It's located in the design district and it specializes in seafood. It is a really cool spot with a cozy atmosphere and the staff are all incredibly knowledgeable about all of the ingredients and very, very attentive. Every dish was perfectly executed, if not better than we could have imagined and there's not one thing that we would have changed. Perfection. Time for some art. We are walking through the Pirelli Foundation, which is a privately funded hangar, museum, call it whatever you want. And right now the exhibit is Wynn Evans and it's these huge art installations. This is the largest exhibition of Wynn Evans work ever shown in Italy. The exhibition spans over a 20 year period with explorations of light and sound through massive installations. Next, we saw the monumental Seven Heavenly Places installation by Kiefer, also known as the Seven Towers. The towers, first revealed in 2004, were updated in 2015 as the artist feels that the art should continually evolve and move. 
Visitors can now walk through the installation and actually feel the enormity of the towers. The Prada Foundation is one of the most iconic buildings in Milan. Whether you want to go inside and see an exhibition or go and admire the exterior beauty. Famed architect Rem Koolhaas's firm converted a century-old distillery into the new art center for the foundation, complete with a haunted house covered in 24-karat gold leaf and a cinema camouflaged by mirrors. That's so creepy. Oh. Our final tour of the trip. Some might even dare to say the most important tour of the trip. The Chocolate Room! <laughs> The chocolate room is changed every three months. The walls have changed, the tiles have changed, and even some of the chocolate truffle flavors are changed to reflect the season. You could smell the chocolate from down the hall. Words can't describe that smell. Wow. So white chocolate is very nice. White chocolate's my favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this one, so you know, it's got a nice Oh, Ooh. nice. This will be a very nice tasting. Cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a very nice sample platter of basically everything that sounded good. So this tour has led to one conclusion. I want, no, I need a chocolate room in my house. <laughs> that was definitely a highlight. Like, that, oh my God. That's my favorite tour we've ever done. I wish that my bedroom smelled like that. I know, that was actually like, ah, so refreshing. refreshing. I want sculpt animals made out of chocolate. In I want mind. tiles made out of chocolate. Same, except for like I get changed every three I months. Would, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say you'd eat on your tiles and you wouldn't have a house anymore. I was like, hopefully it doesn't get hot in there. Oh my god! But <laughs> you wake up with melted brown everywhere. Oh my god! We were just leaving our hotel in Milan for the airport. It's about 5:30 a.m. It's a little further than our usual wake-up time, but... It wasn't that hard to get up, actually, today. I don't know. We haven't yeah. really adjusted to the time. We went to sleep at 10.30 also. <laughs> so that might have something to do with it. Yeah, it was a great city. We kind of lucked out with winter weather here. And can't wait to come back. Milan is an incredible city. It is beautiful, the people are warm, and the food is incredible. There's so much culture and history, you really can't go wrong. Bye, Milan. See ya. Ciao. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We are doing a giveaway when we reach 500 subscribers, so subscribe, please. Hey, Alana. Yes, Elisa. What do you prefer, pizza or pasta? Is it pasta or pasta? Either way, let us know what team you're on in the comments below. You can follow us on Instagram at AlanaXAliza for our daily updates, opinions, stories, and just general life, you know? New videos come out every Wednesday at 1 p.m. So stay tuned and watch. We'll see you next week.